Our featured artist this month is the amazing inventor, Terry Bolton, and good friend um, who came up with this wonderful idea for Chameleon Pens. And something that we decided to do this month as a digital download was um, kind of the picture, one of the pictures that started it all. And it's a picture that we like to call the Garden Gate. And it's something that Terry did that once he had colored it with only using a few pens, it really blew our mind. And it opened up the whole idea and really the understanding of what the whole concept of chameleon pens was. And that idea is to do more with less. And Terry believed inside every marker pen, there was this whole palette of color tones that you could go up and down that tonal scale um, and being able to change the color and create almost a, a watercolor type effect, uh, a natural blending effect with alcohol-based marker pens. So what he did was he came up with this beautiful picture that he did using the pens. And there's so many elements in here that I love that I um, I asked uh, my design par design guru, Doug Homer, he's a gentleman who's responsible for all the wonderful visuals, all the visuals that you see to do with chameleon pens. And I said, I really love this picture and I would love something like that to give to our viewers to be able to download and color along with it. Something that allows them to do this washed effect with these wonderful little dabbles of color, how you get the gradation in the brick and the sort of washed watercolor, you know, it's almost like an illustrator style that he's done on the leaves and on the trees back there and some color gradations on flowers, just things, grass, things that we can play with, trees, wood grain, um, those sorts of things. So Doug, the artistic man that he is, came out with this, which is our version of the garden gate. And he's given us some elements in here to color that are really going to be a lot of fun. So I'm going to go through some techniques on each of these things to show you how you can put those techniques together and make an amazing picture. We're going to work on how you can do something uh, cylindrical or spherical and give it depth and dimension. We're going to show you how to do wood grain, how to get some real uh, cool effects on the stone or the brick back, back here. Also the little stepping stones here, how to get that nice washed effect where you can do some color hopping in here. Um, and again, some great variation and uh, variegation inside of those leaves. The wood grain is so much fun. I can't wait to show you that. And then just pulling it all together to create one whole picture. Now, you may not want to do the whole thing at once. You might want to, it's, there's a lot of work in here. So you might want to just take your time and do it one piece at a time. And that's exactly how I'm going to do it for you. I'm going to show you how I do the wood grain, how I do the brick. And remember, it's a digital download, so you can download it as many times as you want and print it as many times as you want. And I'm actually using just a 32-pound copy paper here um, from, I think we get it from Staples, so it's not expensive. Um, if you want to be able to use a, a more expensive paper, you can use an uh, alcohol paper like V paper. Or Copic has a lot of great papers. Uh, Sinus's stamp has some great cardstock. But really, a lot of the techniques we're going to do, we're not, we're not going to do some layering of color. So I'd still try and use a better quality paper if you can, uh, 32 pound stock or better. But other than that, it's just there to have fun and just practice techniques. And then if you want to pull it all together, you can do an absolutely beautiful picture. Reminiscent of this. You can start just about anywhere in the picture. I tend to start at the top and kind of work down. Um, so I'm going to start with the sky and then probably move into the leaves. I might jump around a little bit to some bricks some wood grain. Um, just so you can sort of see the elements rather than sitting there and watching me do the whole picture. It might be a bit like watching paint dry. I'm just going to show you some of the key elements on how to color all the individual pieces. So I'm going to start with the sky and I'm going to use the sky blue. That's the best one to use. And I want to fuse this for a fairly long time. So I probably want to give it about 30 seconds. Now I'm going to be manipulating my picture around here so I can get a good angle. So if you don't mind, it might be a little interesting watch. Now always make sure you check off on the side just to make sure that you have this to the light tone you want. I want real absence of color here as I'm working my way down. Now, I'm keeping this in a very light mid-tone right now, so it's 
just this hint of a blue back there. And really the way you do sky that's a lot of fun is you sort of define it, the white areas like clouds, by the absence of coloring. So give you a bit of an idea. I'm going to work this. So I'm going to pretend that there's going to be a cloud in this area here. So you'll see that there's very, very light areas. This is one technique of doing the sky. There's lots of different techniques. But this is my favorite. So I'm starting to define some white areas in there. And then I'm going to striate over top of it. Give me a couple more second fuse. I'm going to try and give a little white area in here. So I'm going to sort of work down like that. The nice part about the alcohol pens is that you can layer the color, which is kind of cool. Like I'm doing here. Test off the side. And you can also blend them together. I'm going to keep that in a very light hint of color. Just to give you an idea of the true color that you're looking at, this is this is the true sky blue. So I'm just really trying to use it in a, in a light fused position because I want it to be a little bit darker down in these areas here. I'm going to pick that up and I want it a little bit darker down here. So again this is kind of reminiscent of a bit of an illustrator effect that you're getting. Another way you can do it is sort of a, um, a light striated effect adding those in and it just can give it a bit more depth and dimension. Again, just kind of a little bit like watercolors, just dipping it in. And every pen is almost like a, a blender pen if you fuse it long enough. So that's where it gets kind of neat. You can really play with that idea. So you can sort of build from the light into the dark into the back. And again, if you use the concept of these white areas as kind of being clouds, the stuff that you're not coloring, that absence of color can be kind of neat. I should build into the color. And where it can get really neat too is you can do a very soft tone of a pink in behind there if you want to try and give an illusion of maybe a sunset happening in the background. So, that's just an interesting way to do the sky. Okay, now I'm going to work on the backgrounds of the trees. And I'm going to use a little different method on this one. Um, this one's kind of neat. I'm actually going to use two colors um, and get some pretty good definition. So I'm going to use, believe it or not, the NU3. That's the fawn. And I'm going to use the YG3. Plus, I'll probably throw in a sprinkling of the olive green in there too. And um, yeah, probably those three to do all those, the um, whole scene back there of the leaves. So uh, to get her started, I am actually going to start using the fawn as a base color. This is an interesting way that you can do color overlays. And I'm going to fuse the fawn. So I'm actually wanting to think about the idea of having kind of the light coming this way. So these areas are going to be all kind of highlighted that should be as if they're in the light and the motion I'm going to use on this is just a small circular motion and I'm going to carry this down and as I'm carrying it down it's starting to get darker into that fawn area ultimately you kind of want it in a darker fawn as you get down towards this bottom, because we're going to lay color over top of that. 
So fusing it again. Generally in smaller spaces like this and lighter colors, you really don't need to fuse longer than 10 seconds. Okay, I want this to start getting darker in here because this, when I layer the color over top, we're gonna want it to be a nice deep green. Okay, I, I just kind of kind of work the color from thinking of these edges being the light based ones. I'm just continuing to progress through here, working on these areas that I want to pretend are just going to be a little bit lighter as the sun comes across them. So now we've done the first layer that um, has that NU3. Purpose for that is kind of to just, I'm going to layer color to tone down because I'm going to use a lot of different greens in this because of course it's a garden gate. So now that I've done that with the fawn, I'm going to start working in on the yellow green. And this one's pretty simple. I'm going to use the brush tip. And giving that a nice fuse. I'm just going to go right back over top of the areas that I just worked. Here's where it gets kind of cool. If you want, you can kind of go back in and layer on again and then use that same green to sort of add some texture. It's just like this little tone on tone dabble. And that's the cool part about this is you can also layer the color variation from light to dark. Since I did the fawn color light to dark and I'm fusing that I'm doing the spring meadow light to dark, I don't lose that highlighted effect. I'm hitting these on much shorter fuses because this area here is much smaller area for me to color. So it's just really different than 
any other marker system you've probably used, but it really does some cool effects. So that was done just there with the YG3 and uh, the NU3. So we got all those different color variations out of these two pens. Pretty cool. So some neat stuff that we did there. Now I'm going to work on these trees and I'm going to use the olive. And I'm still going to use the brush pen. Again, thinking about the light source sort of being on this side, I'm going to put my pens away. I'm fusing away. And now I'm just going to test that off on the side. I'm going to give that a few more seconds because I really want to work this to be a fairly light color. I'm going to fuse it again because it started to go a little dark in it. I want it to get darker towards the bottom. Here. There we are. Fusing it again. It's about 10 seconds. I just want a, a hint of the green. Okay, I want that light source kind of up here. You could do this with a bullet nib too, really. Now I'm getting down to this size. It's dicey. I would probably do that with a bullet nib, but I'm just going to stick with the brush since I started with it. I just gave that one a shorter fuse because it's a smaller bit of tree. I'm actually going to all of these a little. I was thinking that they were the light green trees before, but I think they're all of now. Stick with that. <laughs> all right. I'm going to give this last little olive tree that nice light edge to it, but I want to really keep it nice and dark along this side. Really giving it some dimension. And there you go. That's as simple as it is to do the sky. And we've done this once again using just the NU3. We layered that one down first, went over top with some YG3, and then also just doing these trees a slightly different color. I added the olive, and we got all those great color variations. And don't be afraid to try different methods like just stippling it, mixing the different colors that way, getting some texture. Uh, different dimension on it. All right, now we're going to work on the other big surface area, the um, brick wall that's in the back. And I'm actually going to try and still stick in the vein of, of what we've done here using different shades of gray. Of course, you could do natural brick. Um, there's a lot of different ways you can do that. If I was doing natural brick, I think I would probably use some fawn with the brown um, to get that kind of feel to it. But um, I'm going to use the CJ8, uh, CG8, that's the cool gray. And I'm actually gonna work this completely in the bullet nib rather than using the brush nib because it's a small area. So I'm gonna work doing this very simply by fusing. This is a really neat method because I'm gonna wanna feel like the light, like we said, source is coming from this direction. So I wanna fuse so that I have a very light, testing that off to the side, gray. And I'm going to do this as kind of a, it's going to look a little weird at first, but I'm going to wash the top in light gray, then even the side a little bit. And I'm just going to work that brick because I want it darker on this lower area. And these are the lighter brick pieces. I might want a little bit more definition in that. I'm going to color it a little bit more gray. 
There we go. You can see it's starting to deepen as I'm coloring. A little edge to it. So then working all the bricks like this, just giving it a short fuse at the top. And then just an up and down motion here. I actually would throw a little bit extra gray back there for a drop shadow. You'll see how that'll incorporate a little bit. Blend that in. Kind of work that bottom corner illusion to give it illusion of depth just by working it that way. Again, we're only using one pen here and just giving it some light hits. I think the gray is a great example of this. That you can do with just one pen. You can also do sort of a bit of a shadowing at the bottom too, like that. When I'm achieving that is I'm fusing this for just like a nanosecond and then I'm just sort of as I'm starting to see it darken I stop. So it's kind of an interesting effect. What's really cool is if you hang in an area for a little bit and then just sort of use the pen to, to add that drop shadow in behind to lift the, lift the leaves a little bit up off the brick. The bullet nib is awesome for this. Gets me right in there. I'm just going to finish off this, some of this. You know, I got a touch of green going over into my brick wall. You could pretend that that was natural moss. <laughs> I could use my blender pen to sort of smooth that out a little. We'll see. Not sure what I want to do. I'm actually kind of doing two bricks at a time. This way I can sort of spend out evenly. It's only medium on a small area. Fuse the bullet nib to hit a small area like this. I'm just trying to give this a little bit of a shadow. You're going to love when we do the wood grain. I'm not an artist or an illustrator, so you'll probably get your shadows better than me, <laughs> I must say. But I'm just guessing right now. So I'm just going to do this stuff darker in here. I want that to really make these flowers pop. Ooh, I think that might have been a wheel. Oh well, I'll fix that. I'll do some depth with the brown. Can't really make a mistake. Because you can kind of make it look like it's part of the, the whole plan. All right, I'm going to stop with the gray now, and I'm going to work almost. I'm going to work into the mortar. Yeah, that was a wheel spoke. Whoop. Okay, I'll hit it with the brown. Should make things interesting. Um, now you want to be able to do the. I'm going to color out any of the extra gray that I've got here. So I've got it nice and back and pure to that nice color that I've got. I'm going to stay on the bullet. And this is where I'm going to go in and start to create the, the mortar a little bit. And I want this to be darker than the brick itself. 
You could stay with a light mortar if you want. I kind of like the dark mortar. You could even like overlay fawn or ooh, olive might be kind of good if you want it to be looking a little, um, I think that's the way maybe some yellowy tones or something to look a little mossy, well worn that way. So there you go. That's kind of cool. That is how you do some brick. Okay, now I'm going to actually work on the stepping stones. And to do those, I'm going to use two colors. I'm going to use the OL3, the olive green, and the CG8, the cool gray. And I'm going to do this a little bit in steps for the stepping stones. Yeah. So I'm going to start out with the brush nib. And working with this, I'm just going to start with the the biggest stone and I'm going to start from light and give it like that spherical effect so that it's a stone. It's not off to the side. Now there is going to be a drop shadow in here for the watering can but I'm not going to worry about that right now. That's something I'm going to go back and do a little later. Right now I'm just going to treat my stones like they're little round objects, which means I want a little highlight and I want to work around that. And then we're going to deal also with the light source being blocked by the wheelbarrow. But we'll get back to that. I find it's easier, at least this is my method, to build this stuff the way I would see it first of all and then I sort of build um, I can darken it, and my motto is always, I can add color. It's easier to add than it is to remove. And then I'm going to worry about where, you know, drop shadows and stuff will be shortly. I just want to kind of get the feel of this stone having some dimension to it first. I like that touch base. That place to start. Um... And that's the nice thing about the system because you're working from light to dark. Again, you can always go back and add more work on the cylindrical or um, rounded effect. Just fusing along as I go along. Short little fuses for these small areas. I'm going to pretend that's another stone. It just looks to me like it might be hiding back there. It's had another hit of gray in there. Okay, so I have my stones are all pretty much done. Now I want to do is I want to color in the background behind the stones. And I see this as this wonderful sort of a mossy area back there. Um, so I'm just going to hit this pretty much straight on with the brush tip. I'm just going to go, oh, you can use a bullet too. Probably a bullet would be smarter. Let me go with a bullet. Yeah, bullet nib. Definitely the right choice. It's a cool part. You got either the bullet or the brush to choose from. Quite relaxing. Okay, so I've laid that down and I've got some sort of depth and dimension going here, but what I want to do is just give the illusion that this is creating a shadow on here. So I'm going to go back with my gray and I'm just going to sort of play with that whole idea that there's a, a bit of a darker shadow being cast. So I'm going to make these stones that are in this area a little darker. And I'm actually going to overlay the gray as well to denote that there is a shadow. I don't want to lose a complete spherical, but I want this area to be darker. I would think that would probably have some cast shadow on it as well. So let's just shadow that puppy right up. 
this is sort of giving us the illusion that there's darker area under here. Layer a little bit. There you go. So that's kind of the idea that it's just you've got a little bit of a drop shadow from the wagon that we've got here. And I kind of like the way that overlay of gray gives that a little bit more of a muted look. So I'm just going to hit just a few areas just to tone it down just a touch. Now I want to deal with the drop shadow that this can is going to be causing too. So if the sun's going this way then we're going to have to have a drop shadow down here in this area. I have it highlighted and I don't want to highlight, you know, what? I'm going to use my brush. This feel a little bit better in a larger area when I want to do the brush. And this illustration kind of hints that there's a drop shadow, but I'm going to actually not hint. So I use my gray and I just sort of fuse that and then pulled it outward. And I would think that the handle would also give us some sort of a, a shadowed effect. In there. Kind of getting some depth to that while still sort of giving that dimension. Kind of lines a little hard, so I'm going to blend it out a little. So there's how we do the garden path. With the stones and the mossy miss in between the stones. Pretty cool. Next, I think we're going to do the watering can or the wood. I don't know. Oh, the suspense.